This week on Couple Up. Where were you hiding this guy? I get creative at times, might do something off the wall. Crazy creative. Well, besides him being extremely good looking, with a great physique. <laughs> Sorry that we are giving away our age. <laughs> it was love at first sight. I am a woman who knows what I want. As I see this girl, I get real nervous. Just seeing him smile. Wow. Honestly, she's my best friend. In order to make a relationship work, you need to compromise. Without trust, there can be no relationship. If it's one thing, I really love children. It was the way he looked at me, it made me blush. I'm ready to spend the rest of my life with him. On the dance floor. On the dance floor. <laughs> yes, we both love to dance, so we were out and Russell is actually related to, well, I didn't realize at the time, he was my best friend's cousin. And so when we met, um, one day when we were out all together, she introduced me to him um, and I told her, where were you hiding this guy? <laughs> so uh, he was actually at that time, um, preparing to go away to study so he said you know I don't want any long-distance relationship we kind of hit it off had some current some energy um, and you know but because he was going away he kept in contact via letters in those days they didn't have emails I'm sorry that we are giving away our age but they did not have emails so and no cell phone to call on whatsapp so we had to write letters to each other and that's when we actually got to know each other through letters because I did not, I was not somebody that would open up easily and talk easily. So he didn't really get to know me too much before he went away. So, uh, but when we started writing each other, um, I think that's when he discovered who I, uh, who I am and I discovered who he was, so. Now going back to the dance floor, <laughs> um, that's where I was really impressed. I mean, visually she was, she was good, but when we started to dance, uh, you know, that was, that was very chemistry mm -hmm. said because I'm a very creative person. Never did dance classes per se, but when I, you know, started to dance with her, whenever I got creative in the dance floor, she followed every step that I did. And that was like a wow moment for me. So that was uh, really good. And, and, and that same sort of thing transcended through the relationship uh, with the, even though I get creative at times, and I do something off the wall. Crazy creative. She, <laughs> she was right by my side, so that was a big plus for her. Well, besides him being extremely good looking, <laughs> with a great physique. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> um, I, I was attracted to his creativity. He's an extremely creative person and he's a visionary. Russell is very a settled person. He's a decisive person. And I guess some of that is what I didn't have. And you know, for instance, we own our own home at the age of 24. So it, if it wasn't for him, I, I don't think we would have owned our own home. He's a pusher, he's a fighter. He will a go-getter. So. He, um, he knows what he wants and he goes after it. So, And I, on the other hand, tend to be a little procrastinator. I will be more lackadaisical. One today, one tomorrow, Monday fall on a Friday. Well, that's okay. So, you know, you look for what you don't have in the other person. So that's what attracted me to him. For guys, you know, it's, um, it's uh, usually physical <laughs> attributes and captures at first. So besides her uh, countless physical attributes that will catch any person, I mean, being beautiful and all of <laughs> that, uh, I think one of the things that really attracted me to her is was her um, her ability to, as I said before, to go with me. Um, she was flexible. Uh, I love the fact that she was well spoken. As a matter of fact, most of the things that I had a challenge with, I found it in Joel. Uh, she is very um, um, well educated. She's an academic. She's 
issues uh, that spoken and those things. So you know, it's something that uh, that, that I've got to do to. I think that would be a number one answer, communication. Uh, um, well, different things happen at different stages. Yes, exactly. So, we have been through a very rocky relationship from the start. Well, we got married, started the business at the same time. And as the man, the provider, my goal was to set up the business so that we could do it completely. But in doing that, I neglected the home, neglected her and even the emotional connection, you know, we were just distracted. So we made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. I think we made all of the mistakes. Um, so we would have gone through a lot of, or all of the issues. But, uh, you know, communication, as, as you know, is just one of the main problems for divorce, for couples, uh, relationships being challenged and destroyed. Uh, so communication definitely. Yes, I would say that. I mean, we we started off with a lot of conflict in our relationship. We fought over everything. Um, he's very different from me, and we are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So um, those things got in the way. You know, the things that attract you to the person in the beginning tend to be the things that drive you apart after the relationship. So that's a classic case for us. So. We really, the first seven years, well, I'll say about five, probably the first five to seven years of our marriage was, um, had a lot of conflict, had a lot of disagreements, no communication. Um, he was deeply involved in his business, trying to, trying to build it and be the provider. So the intention was good, but um, along the way, the family life was falling apart. You know, we had a, a young son and the thing is he began spending more and more time at work and so eventually that led to other things an emotional affair and eventually a love affair um, but we were able to surpass that um, we encountered an organization that helped us um, so we were able to do that and get along with our faith in, in God uh, we were able to navigate through that and find healing and restoration and forgiveness and so now we love each other more than when we first got married. So um, I think the, if you use the challenges to bring you together rather than allow it to, to pull you apart, then you come out on the other end a much better and stronger couple with a relationship that cannot be shaken. Uh, a big deal for me would be, um, you know, when people look for someone for a relationship, they look for someone who can meet their needs. And we go into relationships trying to meet our own needs. Uh, and even as Christians, we have the Bible and we, we, we have certain principles to abide with. But past all of that, one of, a big nugget for me was when I learned that marriage is really not just about me and meeting my needs. I mean, when we read the scriptures and it talks about how you know God um, uh, makes an analogy with the church and, and the bride, uh, and we see certain things about marriage there. Marriage is really about Christ, about mirroring His image, about oneness, about unity. That kind of thing is really about. Um, getting the relationship to a place of intimacy and transparency and all of that and it's only until we look to meet the other person's needs rather than try to get our own needs met that is when things really start to click that's when you automatically get your own needs met without trying to get them met if you know what I mean so that was a big nugget for me and uh, you know if I had to do it again if I had to advise young couples I would say that that is one of the main things. If you go into a relationship, go into it looking after the needs of the other person and always see the third party being God as part of it, directing you on how to do it. For 
me, I would say, I would tell couples that you need to be intentional. From the onset, you need to, marriage is work. You have to be doing things in your marriage to bring you towards oneness. If a couple is not intentionally pursuing oneness, you're going to be drifting towards isolation. And you have to guard against isolation in your marriage. And that will only become with intentional scheduling of time together of making sure that you go on date nights, of when the child comes into the home, knowing that your spouse is still your priority. Despite all the needs of the children, your spouse was always God first, your spouse, and then your children. And everything else, including, including church activities, hobbies, everything else comes after. But you must be intentional about working on your marriage and doing things that will strengthen and develop your marriage continually throughout it doesn't end it's a constant work to get it to the point of deeper intimacy you can always go deeper accountability is another good point having couples of people around that you yes. can share your lives with that you can be open and honest get with about your relationship get advice you know the bible talks about a multitude of counselors and i think it's you know sometimes when you go into your challenges you, after a while you think well let me just handle this on my own Mm -hmm. And I think that is the, the devil's intention for us to I, isolate ourselves. But mm -hmm. I rather, I think the best thing to do is when we are open and honest and we can share of our challenges with others, that is uh, when we can get um, help. help. Mm -hmm. Yes.